Good evening. When he was alive, Anwar Sadat called his Libyan neighbor, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, a vicious criminal, sick, and possessed of the devil. Now, Sadat's assassination has helped to make Gaddafi the principal devil of American policy in the Middle East. U.S. anger has been on the boil for months. Last spring, President Reagan expelled all Libyan diplomats from Washington, charging Libya with fomenting terrorism. In August, two Libyan jets attacked planes of the U.S. 6th Fleet and were shot down. Before Sadat's death, the U.S. was offering increased military support to Libya's neighbors. Sadat's killing, with immediate suspicions that Libya was involved, have raised the ante. Washington warned all nations, officials said that meant Libya, not to exploit Egypt's troubles. Two AWACS planes were flown to Cairo to give early, early warning of any Libyan attack. And the U.S. expressed new concern for the Sudan, whose government has repeatedly charged Libya with plotting to overthrow it. Tonight, how serious a threat is Libya, and is the U.S. right to promote Gaddafi to a leading world menace? Jim? Robin, the indictment against Gaddafi has two major counts, that he is supporting terrorist groups around the world with arms, money, and training, and that he wants to create a kind of pan-Islamic republic by conquering or joining with neighboring countries in Africa and the Middle East. The terrorism charge involves Libyan connections, past and present, to just about every terrorist movement there's been from the Philippine Liberationists to the Irish Republican Army and the Palestine Liberation Organization, as well as the Basques and the Corsicans and groups in Lebanon, Somalia, Eritrea, Angola, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Uganda, and Chad. Chad also leads the list of places he'd like to annex. Libyan troops invaded Chad last year. Other countries that have had major or minor military fights with Libya in recent years or are known or believed to be on his ally and annexation list are the Sudan, Egypt, Mauritania, Tunisia, Senegal, Gambia, Ghana, Niger, Nigeria, Malta, Morocco, Mali, Gabon, Zaire, Togo, Sierra Leone, Cameroon, the Central African Republic, and Liberia. We put both of the general charges to Colonel Gaddafi himself when we interviewed him last May on this program. He denied everything but we thought it might be instructive to look at a portion of that rare interview again. We pick it up as the questions turn to the subject of terrorism. How do you answer charges that Libya is involved in promoting and supporting and training international terrorists? This accusation without any uh, justification, also no evidence uh, that uh, we support or promote uh, uh, terrorism. We are against the terrorism, absolutely, and uh, we should a uh, law, very severe law against uh, any terrorist action. Uh, therefore, we are absolutely against uh, terrorism. But uh, now we, we must uh, clarify the meaning of, uh, of terrorism. What is that terrorism? We, we consider uh, the manufacturing of, uh, of nuclear weapon is a terrorist action and uh, establishing foreign military bases in the land of others. It is also terrorism and then make people's suffering from uh, fame uh, to keep uh, food for them uh, it is also terrorism and uh, hijacking airplanes and uh, uh, this uh, honest uh, people uh, uh, to be victim for this action, it is also terrorism, but it is a very small, very small one uh, in the comparison of the uh, the big uh, action of terrorism, uh, which is America is doing now by treating others by its fleets, uh, by its bases, uh, by famine people, is uh, keeping wheat, uh, not to sell and to give to the. Uh, to the poor uh, people, and so on. It is frequently reported that 
uh, let me list some of the places you are said to have given uh, assistance to some of the so-called terrorists and ask if, if it's true. Did you not train and later give sanctuary to the terrorists who attacked the Israeli athletes at the Munich Olympics? Well, no, we have um, yeah, we haven't any relation with this uh, with this uh, accident, uh, and uh, we heard about it in the media, as you heard. But you deny that. No, we have no intention or no decision to do such bad thing is uh, which is uh, consider, uh, considered as a terrorism but uh, we support the, uh, ra the, the struggle of uh, the people for the freedom for the independence uh, like the people of Palestine we support its a struggle because, because it is just a cause do you give do you excuse me do you give support to the Irish Republican army No, no support, no material support, but uh, spiritual one. We, yes, uh, we consider it is, uh, it is, it is just a cause, because uh, Ireland is Ireland and Britain is a Britain. Uh, the existence of Britain in this uh, place is uh, colonization. And uh, our evidence is the struggle which is going now severely in this uh, area. And this, uh, this, uh, this uh, leaders of the Irish army who are dying now uh, of uh, hunger in the jail for this cause. They, they, they have cause, they have justice cause. They want to be independent. Did you send support to the Italian Red Brigades? No, we are against the Red Brigades and uh, we consider them uh, a group, uh, a terrorist group, in fact. To the guerrillas in El Salvador? No, it is far from us and uh, we support the people of El Salvador. We hope uh, these people will succeed uh, to restore it. Is, uh, stability and uh, dignity and uh, freedom we support the people but uh, no relationship uh, between us and these uh, people it is uh, far from us and we have no nothing to do with it now. it has also been charged colonel that your government has sent killer squads to assassinate libyans living abroad of whom 11 have been killed is that true First of all, we have no government. Uh, there are some few people, Libyan people, uh, who, who are royal, royal ones, and uh, they got uh, big quantities of money and uh, got out. This money belonged to the Libyan people. And they uh, did uh, some c crimes against uh, their country, and they support now the uh, foreign intelligence uh, against the security of Libya, and therefore the refusionary committees. Uh, they hold a court, a refusionary court made the decision and decided uh, to punish some of them, they will be, uh, they will be judged to death or sentenced to death or something like this. Uh, there are very it few people. It is according uh, to the judge of this, uh, the judgment of this uh, revisionary court. Do you support that effort? Is it clear? Excuse me, is it a clear? Is the answer is it clear? Yes, I was just wondering if you personally supported that. I noticed that you said some time ago that uh, you ordered 
Libyan exiles to return home or they would be executed. I assume that you support this effort to execute these people then. No, I didn't say like uh, this. Uh, I told them to, they must come back to be uh, safety, to, to be safety, yes. Otherwise, I can't protect them uh, abroad. Therefore, the refugee committees um, may be after them and they may uh, eliminate them. Uh, therefore, I, uh, I declare that uh, if you come back to your country, you will be safety, safe or safety. I guarantee you, but outside, no one can protect you. That I, I, uh, I did, I declared. The FBI, the FBI here in the United States, Colonel, says that your government was behind the attempted assassination of a man here in our state of Colorado, a Libyan exile. Is that true? It was an attempted assassination. The man lived. I don't. It is. I don't think it is true. And I didn't hear about this uh, accident. Um, uh, but I can assure that uh, no one will be killed outside uh, without uh, justice and revolutionary trial. Colonel Gaddafi, many countries in Africa and in Europe are worried that your armed military intervention in the neighboring country of Chad means that you plan to annex Chad and maybe the Niger and other countries in your enlarged uh, Libyan pan-Islamic republic. What are your aims in Africa? We have no plan uh, towards uh, this area. Uh, we want stability, independence, uh, progression for all these uh, continental and for all these uh, countries, uh, particularly in Africa, it is uh, our continental. continental. Um, we have no other uh, intention uh, towards this area. Why did you say when your troops went into Chad that Chad was part of Libya's needed living space? No, it is not true. I said the security of the Chad, uh, it, it, uh, it touches the security of Libya, of course. Uh, but we sent our troops to Chad in accordance with the uh, um, mutual defense, ag defend, ag defense, yes, agreement of defense between us and the national government of Chad, and according to the uh, request of this government to help uh, it for stability and for peace. Yes, and uh, my troops uh, put an end uh, for a civil war which uh, continued about 20 years. And now this civil uh, war ended, ended. And now Chad uh, is living in peace and security. Reminder that interview we did live from Tripoli last May. Now there are two schools of thought on what is the best way to cope with Gaddafi. One is the so-called hard-nosed approach endorsed over the weekend by former President Richard Nixon. It is the approach long advocated by Henry Schuller, a Washington energy consultant who lived in Libya for many years as a U.S. Foreign Service officer and as an oil company executive. On the Sunday following Anmar Sadat's murder, Schuller wrote a long article for the Washington Post editorial section urging Sadat's death be avenged by isolating Gaddafi. Isolate him how, Mr. Schuller? Well, Jim, uh, because of the United States' commercial links with Libya, we end up in the position of providing the technology and the technicians to produce the oil, which generates the revenues at the rate of some $28 million a day, even at currently reduced levels. Uh, the revenues that enable him to s export subversion and terrorism to all of the neighboring countries and, and to uh, subvert U.S. goals in the region. So I take it you do not take his denials as, uh, as spoken? No, I'm afraid it's a very disarming report and a very, it's a very useful uh, uh, interview from his point of view. But uh, part of it 
part uh, uh, was blatantly untrue, and the other part was uh, was clever semantics. Yeah. All right. Now, isolating him, you say that what what are the commercial things that what are the what are our commercial ties that you think should be severed, and how should they be severed? We are the largest individual purchaser of Libyan oil, or were during the first six months of the year, which is uh, the last full statistics we have. We uh, imported about 40% of Libya's oil at a cost of uh, some $20 million uh, that, the United, or that the United States paid every day for that oil. Uh, Libya is our third largest uh, supplier, foreign supplier of crude oil. Uh, so we provide the market for it. We also provide the personnel. We provide the equipment uh, to, uh, to the spare parts that can allow Libya to continue to produce and generate revenues uh, with which to purchase Soviet military equipment and export subversion. So what you're saying is that we ought to quit doing all of that, right? Yes, I certainly think that uh, we should, and not only uh, because of the, the links, but also because the, uh, the danger that is presented to American citizens who are currently resident in, in Libya uh, in the event of, of hostilities, uh, uh, they will be very much jeopardized. They should not be put into that situation. And also because the, their presence there and their potential role as a hostage uh, inhibits the response that the administration can make. Well, now, the State Department has already urged the oil companies to get their people out of there, but they haven't done it. What's, what's the problem? Well, the companies uh, contend that they have not had a clear enough direction from the State Department. Uh, that the State Department has requested but has not ordered them to move the people out. And they are afraid that if they, if they the companies, are seen to take the initiative to move the people out, that uh, it might indeed jeopardize those people, that it uh, would undoubtedly result in the nationalization of their assets there uh, and probably in an embargo of the United States. If we took these actions that you've just suggested, um, would, they wor would it really, really work in terms of isolating uh, Gaddafi unless Europe and Japan went along? And is there any assurance that they would? Wouldn't they just buy the oil? Wouldn't they just provide the technicians and the equipment just like we've been doing? Well, in terms of uh, buying the oil, uh, uh, currently Libya is producing around 700,000 barrels a day only. Uh, earlier this year, they were producing 1.6 million barrels a day, and they would like to produce at that level. But there is simply not a market for it because it is priced too high. So there are commercial reasons why there would not be alternative markets for this oil. In addition, the oil that we purchase, the Libyan oil, is especially suited to our product mix, uh, which, which seeks uh, gasoline and kerosene in the lighter ends of the barrel. Whereas Europe, and, and especially now, coming into the winter season wants fuel oil, which is the heavy end of the barrel, and Libyan oil does not lend itself to that. How is Qaddafi liable to react if we were to do these things? Well, I think that, that uh, he would probably nationalize uh, the, the uh, assets of the American companies that were there. Uh, he would probably uh, uh, impose an embargo on the United States, but those would be of, of, of no, uh, would not amount to insurmountable barriers to taking these actions. Thank you. Robin? As Jim said, there's another school on what to do about Qaddafi. It holds that the threat is being exaggerated and that doing so only helps Qaddafi to be taken more seriously elsewhere. One adherent of that school is Michael Hudson, professor of international relations at Georgetown University and director of its Center for Contemporary Arab Studies. Mr. Hudson, who is exaggerating the Qaddafi threat? Well, I think that uh, the uh, Egyptians and the Sudanese and the Americans are uh, making a great deal out of uh, what is actually a fairly small fish in the Middle Eastern pond. The real uh, problem, of course, as far as U.S. interests and the region as a whole is concerned, is the Palestinian issue. Gaddafi is riding on that very effectively, and I think by making uh, Gaddafi uh, a scapegoat and uh, an object of, uh, of all of this wrath, only strengthens him uh, and blows him up beyond proportion. You uh, heard the sort of bulletin of particulars that is charged against Qaddafi that uh, Jim read at the beginning, and you heard that supported to a large degree by uh, Mr. Schuller. Don't you believe any of this evidence of uh, Qaddafi's troublemaking in Africa and his threats against Middle East countries like Egypt and Sudan? Well, I have no reason to think that uh, Qaddafi has not interfered in a great many of those places. Uh, but after all, uh, Middle Eastern politics and third world politics is not a picnic. Uh, 
governments uh, quite readily interfere uh, by clandestine and underhanded means in uh, supporting others. And what we call troublemaking, of course, is seen in a very different way by a lot of people there. Well, what effect will the exaggeration that you say uh, the America is guilty of, along with Egypt and the Sudan, what effect is this going to have? Well, I think that uh, one of the effects it's had already is to strengthen Gaddafi in Libya. He's been facing what I would call a deteriorating internal situation. There's been opposition rising against him, hence his campaign of assassinations against Libyans uh, in exile. But I can't think of anything better than what has happened to him, uh, such as the shooting down by the Sixth Fleet of the two planes, uh, such as the assassination of uh, Sadat, and such as the repeated uh, loud condemnations by Washington to uh, enhance his uh, standing. Well, but the first two elements of that weren't part of the exaggeration, were they, of that list you just gave? No. Uh, I'm just wondering what the effect of the exaggeration is, as you put it, exaggeration of uh, his importance. Well, I think that as far as the United States is concerned, to exaggerate uh, Gaddafi is simply to turn our eyes from more important things. Uh, uh, to single him out in this way gives him a great deal more uh, resonance and impact in the region itself. People who might have doubted him or questioned his, his balance or, or his heavy-handedness internally would say, well, at least, uh, you know, at least he's uh, got the, uh, the Americans against him, and that, and that helps. How is, um, is, uh, do you think that Washington should be handling Gaddafi? Well, my impression is that uh, the way to uh, keep uh, Gaddafi more or less in his place, and remember, Libya is, after all, a rather small Middle Eastern power on the margins of most everything, uh, is, uh, in fact, uh, to deal with him uh, correctly but coolly. And I don't see uh, that it's impossible uh, at some point in the future for uh, Gaddafi or his successor to uh, uh, turn in a more moderate or centrist uh, direction, say, in the manner that uh, Iraq has turned in recent years. What would be the effect of the policy Mr. Schuller outlined? Well, I think that would only make uh, the present situation worse. I don't think that uh, uh, we can really do much to hurt Gaddafi. Already, uh, most U.S. companies are not uh, drawing any uh, Libyan oil, or very, not very much, uh, at the present time. I think uh, Libyan reserves are sufficient to finance uh, development projects, perhaps at a slightly lower level. And uh, I think that the political gain, in terms of uh, martyrdom, in a sense, that he would uh, receive from this embargo uh, would far outweigh what damage it might cause to him. Well, thank you. Jim? Schuler, how do you respond to that? Well, I think the, uh, I would take exactly the contrary view, that uh, having spoken to a good many uh, Libyans uh, who take the view that why do you expect us to assert pressure on Gaddafi to moderate his policies, or why would you expect us to risk our lives in, in seeking a new, uh, a new leader uh, if you, the Western world, are unwilling to uh, take these very difficult decisions? Hudson? Well, I think that that's up for the Libyans themselves to decide. I don't see that the United States uh, uh, has to uh, give the lead. If the Libyans are not willing to do this themselves, uh, that's their problem. I think we have to look out for our own interests. Well, I, I think that, that you are, are confusing. I'm not saying that we should take the lead by uh, uh, encouraging uh, assassination and resorting to Gaddafi's own measures. I'm simply saying that we should stop supporting him through our commercial linkage. Well, yes, but it's obvious that we're not supporting him. We have made it uh, quite clear through a number of measures that fall far short of what you're suggesting that uh, we don't approve. I think it's perfectly consistent with diplomatic practice to say you don't approve uh, and still to remember that you're going to have to deal with uh, Libya. You're probably going to have to deal uh, with this regime itself for some time. And I don't think one ought to exclude the possibility that uh, through maintaining contact, one can moderate future policy. Remember, it's a, it's a curious thing that uh, the Qaddafi regime repeatedly has come back again and again to the United States uh, uh, saying, uh, we, don't, we do want to have uh, correct relationships and so forth and so on. You don't buy that? I, I think that's significant that yeah. they do this. No, I think that when we have uh, responded to these overtures, and for example, uh, in the fall of 1979, uh, Secretary of State Vance uh, met with the Libyan ambassador to the, to the United Nations, and agreed that there would be uh, a dialogue open, that they would attempt to uh, improve relations. Uh, 
the President of the United States actually received uh, the Libyan representative in the Oval Office. Uh, and this was rewarded with uh, the burning of the American Embassy uh, in Benghazi by mobs who were provided with the wrecking bars uh, by the Libyan army uh, uh, and encouraged by Libyan propaganda. Let me ask you this, Mr. Schuller, the point that Mr. Hudson made a moment ago, which was that Qaddafi is basically a small fish and his importance has really been exaggerated. And the more we continue to call attention to him, the, more, the worse we're going to make the situation ourselves. He's a small fish um, on, in the uh, uh, conventional wisdom uh, of, of Middle Eastern experts because Libya was always out of the mainstream. Uh, and Libya only has two and a half million people at most. But Libya has massive income uh, that that two and a half million people can't absorb. With that income, they can hire an awful lot of, of mercenaries. Uh, um, as, as Egyptian, uh, very senior Egyptian official has pointed out recently, uh, it only takes uh, $100 a month and you can hire an awful lot of people in the mm. poverty-stricken regions of Africa. So with the money and the arms, he can do damage far beyond uh, uh, what one would uh, assess for his... Well, I, I should say, if, if it's a question of a ragtag uh, group of terrorists or guerrillas that uh, keep uh, Numeri from sleeping well in his bed at night, or Mubarak, uh, that we should look uh, seriously to the stability of those regimes. I find it difficult uh, to believe that uh, Gaddafi can pose such a threat unless those regimes are really much more decrepit uh, than we think they are. Well, those regimes may indeed be uh, uh, decrepit, but they need to have time. Uh, decrepit or not, they need the time, just as, as Sadat needed time, to move towards the kind of accommodation of the Palestinians. Mr. Hudson, was Anwar Sadat correct when he called Gaddafi a madman? I think that uh, Gaddafi is subject to uh, changes of personality. I think he's, he's erratic. I certainly would not call him mad. I think there is a great deal of method in what mm. some would call madness. I, I would call uh, a, a policy of, uh, uh, of uh, pursuing uh, broad national and religious interests. We have to go. Robin? Yes, thank you, gentlemen, Mr. Hudson, Mr. Schuller, uh, for joining us tonight. Good night, Jim. Good night, Robin. That's all for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night. I'm Robert McNeil. Good night.